So the uh, real projective space Rpn is uh, defined to be the quotient of the sphere Sn in which we uh, impose an equivalence relation uh, which identifies each point x in the sphere Sn with the opposite point minus x. And uh, for n bigger than 1, it turns out, I mean, the, uh, the real projective space Rpn is, is kind of quite subtle and uh, unfamiliar and has all sorts of strange properties. Uh, but uh, but in the case of n equals 1, it turns out to be quite simple. Uh, the uh, real projective space Rp1 is simply homeomorphic to S1. And the uh, point of this demonstration is to try and explain why that is. Um, so <clears throat> on the left-hand side of this picture is, is, you know, this is a picture of the space Rp1. Ele a single element of Rp1 is an equivalence class of points in the circle S1. Uh, uh, the equivalence relation is that x is identified with minus x, so a single point of Rp1 is just a pair of opposite points in the circle. So you know, we, that's what's shown in this picture here. As we uh, slide around, we, we just have a, a pair of opposite points and can uh, vary, that, vary that pair. Uh, and the claim is that, uh, that this space Rp1 is actually just homeomorphic to the original space S1 itself. And that's easy, kind of easy to see in terms of complex numbers, right? Um, you know, if you've got a, uh, yeah, we can think of S1 as the uh, set of complex numbers of absolute value 1. And then if you've got a complex number of absolute value 1, then you can look at the pair of square roots. Right? So you've got every, uh, yeah, every Z in S1 has two square roots, uh, and they're opposites to each other. In other words, so the, the set of set of square roots of z is a, is a pair of opposite points in s1 in other words a single point of rp1 so here you know this uh, this is the point one in s1 um, and you've got the two square roots of one a plus or minus one here's one and here's minus one and we can move this around if we move it all the way around to here so uh, here we've got the point minus one in s1 and then the two square roots of uh, of, of minus one are plus i and minus i. Here's plus i up at the top here, and there's minus i down at the bottom. It's slightly more subtle here, we can move this point here. I mean, here we've moved F, this point z in S1 to be equal to i, uh, you know, at the top of the circle. The two square roots of i, I mean, i is, you know, e to the uh, you know, that's at uh, e to the i pi over 2, and then the uh, two square roots, so this one is e to the i pi over 4, and that's minus e to the i pi over 4. Remember, you know, the square root of uh, this, e to the i theta squared is e to the 2i theta. Well, so the square roots of e to, the two, e to the i theta are plus or minus e to the i theta over 2. Uh, yeah, this, uh, this is at theta equals pi over 2, and then the two square roots are at... Uh, the theta is pi over 4 here, and, uh, and then the negative of that over there. Um, yeah, so we start here, um, with the, here's kind of theta is 0, the, uh, which has got plus 1, and then you've got the theta over 2 is also 0, one square root is 0 at plus 1, and the other square root there is at minus 1. And then, uh, you know, as the angle for, for our z increases, uh, then the angle for the two square roots increases as well, but half the speed. And then, uh, as we go all the way around here, you know, if you kind of follow a single square root, then it's you know, as as our z goes all the way around by two pi. Then any we you kind of chase one of the square roots, and only moves around by pi. But uh, but it doesn't mean actually make so much sense to think about following a single square root over here. We're looking at the pair of square roots as a single object. And as kind of one square root goes around by pi, then the pair of square roots goes around uh, to uh, back to exactly where it was. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so this picture is kind of showing that uh, that, that RP one is homeomorphic to S one. It's one way of looking at it in terms of uh, complex numbers and their squares and square roots. But here's a kind of more geometric way to say the same thing. Okay, so here is kind of outer circle. We're kind of thinking of pairs of opposite points on the outer circle as being uh, you know, elements of RP1. Right. <clears throat> yeah, and as we said before, I mean, uh, a single point of RP1 is an equivalence class of points in S1. And uh, for this particular equivalence relation we're looking at, an equivalence class just means a pair of opposite points. 
But yeah, so if you've got a pair of opposite points like this, then you can draw the line between them and see where it meets this uh, this other circle here. Okay. And it can, well, it's going to always meet this other, yeah, this is a circle that uh, passes through the origin tangentially. And uh, yeah, this, this line is always going to meet, meet the uh, circle there, but it's going to meet at one other point. Okay. And as we... Uh, as we vary our point in RP1, in other words, we vary our pair of opposite points in the circle, um, then this, this kind of supplementary uh, intersection point moves around uh, this uh, smaller circle here. So um, for every pair of opposite points on the outer circle, we get a single point on the inner circle. Um, and uh, so this, uh, this is kind of uh, establishing a bijection between RP1, the set of a set of opposite pairs here, and uh, and S1 a set of single points on a small circle. Um, so that's a, another way to see that, uh, that that RP1 is homeomorphic to S1. And apparently these kind of things are different, right? I mean, on the previous demonstration, we did this thing with uh, uh, with complex numbers, and then here we've done this more geometric thing with this points and intersections. But it turns out if you actually just go through and work out all the uh, work out all the formulae, you find that these, these two maps are actually just the same map, you know, just different ways of uh, seeing the same thing.